Today, we're going to get into first busting five actor myths. So uh, take some notes. If there's any aha moments, drop the aha or your booms or your epiphanies or I needed to know that. Thank you in the comments throughout. Myth number one is that my career as an actor is a solo journey or what we like to call the lone wolf syndrome. Um, that is a myth. Uh, it's easy to believe because you're working as a solo artist. Um, you're getting hired as an individual. Uh, but nothing in life happens as an individual. Nothing good or big happens as an individual. If you think even of individual athletes in the Olympics, um, yeah, they are they are entering the Olympics as an individual. They are winning the gold medal, but they had a coach, they had a trainer, they probably had a sports psychologist, they had a physiotherapist, they had a chiropractor, they had a personal assistant to book their travel, they had a nutritionist. Um, they had all kinds of people on their team. And so a big part of being an actor is to find your team, find your community, um, find people that you can rehearse with, find people that you can play with, find people that you can record your auditions with, uh, and resist the urge to remain a lone wolf. I did this for a long, long time, uh, both as a stand-up comedian, as, a, as an actor, and it makes things very lonely. Uh, it can make things depressing. Um, and also in life, when you're fighting for things just for yourself, your motivation sometimes can only go so far. But when you're fighting for things for a team or on a team, often we'll do more for other people or do more for the team than we would do for yourself. So it's easy if you're only doing things just selfishly for yourself. Maybe you don't get up in the morning because you're like, ah, this sucks. I'm just going to sleep in today. But when you know other people are relying on you or when you know someone else is showing up, like think about a, a fitness trainer. Maybe you don't want to go to the gym today, but if you know your trainer or your gym buddy is waiting for you and they're going to be there, you don't want to let them down. So uh, resist the urge to remain a lone wolf. Find your tribe, find your community. Uh, and again, we're here internationally. So um, if we're able to find our community and build a community internationally, and it's one of my favorite things about Audition Hero and Actors Audition Club is that we have this community of brilliant actors and brilliant artists uh, and the hive mind is smarter than the solo mind. One plus one does not equal two. One plus one equals three. And one plus one plus one equals six. And everything in life is better when you do it with more people. Um, that's just the nature of things. So uh, that is myth number one. Busted. Did I bust it? Does anyone still believe you're better off doing this alone? You just go into a cabin in the woods. And you think about uh, when you actually book things, you're in an ensemble cast. Maybe you do solo and one-man shows. But even if you're doing a one-man show, you got a stage manager, you got a director, you got a lighting guy, you got a costuming person. And you have an audience as well. And the audience is part of this too. So as an actor, you're a storyteller and your job is to tell a story to the audience. So if you're thinking, I'm in this solely for myself and you're not honoring the audience, then you're also not really doing your job. Um, myth number two. You want to bring it up? Bit number two is that your training as an actor has a completion date. And it never ends. Like anything, it never ends. Um, you're born into this world knowing nothing. At some point, you're going to die. And hopefully, the entire time that you're here, uh, you're growing and continuing to learn and continuing to grow. Uh, myself, I mentioned I went through that eight-month super intensive um, conservatory program with Tom Todorov's conservatory based out of New York. But I know that that is just the launching off point for me. That was the most intense training that I've ever been involved in. We, uh, we did scene study, monologue study, uh, cold reads, uh, audition study, film history, theater history, movement, Shakespeare, improv, uh, voiceovers, commercial auditions. Um, what else? We did clown. Like You name a, a class or a discipline in the acting world. We did it for eight months. Uh, and it was a brilliant experience, but I know that I got to continue to learn and continue to grow. So if you're someone on this call who went to theater school or went to TV and film school uh, back in the day uh, and then just decided, hey, I learned everything I need to learn. Well, you got to continue to learn. The, uh, the industry is ever evolving and ever growing. So you got to learn with it. Uh, and the second you stop growing is the second that you stop um, kind of living um, one of the definitions of life is growing and reproducing itself. Uh, so if you're 
if you're stale and you if you were the person that you were 20 years ago when you graduated university, um, I feel bad for you because you need to continue to grow. And if you're feeling that, don't feel bad. Just realize, OK, I got to grow. Lars is calling me out of my bullshit. I've been staying the same and being uh, stagnant for the last 20 years. Now it's time to up level. And in TV and film industry, think about changes in technology. If you're an actor who went to acting or television theater school, uh, television film school, but you now haven't learned Zoom and you haven't learned maybe some basic editing or you haven't learned the technical side of social media, for example, uh, you're in a whole new world that uh, has evolved. So you got to continue and you got to up level and become actor 2.0 in your life. So always be growing always be learning, always be changing. What does that mean? That means reading books. That means attending workshops. So congratulations, you're here today. So chances are, if you're here today, you're not one of those people uh, who is stagnant. You are a person with a growth mindset. And we talked about that a lot in day one, the difference between a hero mindset and a difference between a growth mindset. So congratulations, you're in the right place. Never stop learning, never stop growing because you're never just staying still. Um, you're either moving forward and you're learning a lot of people think, oh, if I'm not learning and growing, I'm just staying where I am. No, you're, you're actually moving backwards because your um, things you learn in the past, they have a shelf life uh, and a half life. Like you think about someone who goes to med school 20 years ago. Well, if they didn't upgrade, they're a doctor with the knowledge of medicine 20 years ago and things have changed. So you need to continue to learn, continue to upgrade things. Um, myth number two, <laughs> busted. Keep learning. Did I just go blurry? There I am. I'm back. Uh, myth number three. You want to call that up? Myth number three is that my career as an actor is all about who I know. A lot of people say, oh, it's all who I know. I don't know directors and actors and producers. You just got to get in with the, the right group. It's it, I got to have the right look and then I got to meet the right people. Uh, and as our mentor, Tom Todorov, always says, is that every industry is first what you know and then who you know. And if you're pushing back on that, uh, any profession is that's the case. So you let's say um, let's say you want to be a plumber and you have an uncle who's a plumber. You're not just going to be able to say to your uncle, hey, Uncle Joe, uh, give me a job as a plumber. And he's not going to say, oh, you're my nephew. OK, I'll give you a job, um, at least not on your own at first. He's going to have to take you on as an apprentice. He's going to have to teach you all the professional things all the lingo, all the equipment, all the best practices, how to do things. So first, it's what you know, then who you know. And here's the example I'll give you is even if you knew, let's say you have this rich uncle lives in Hollywood. He's a Hollywood producer. And you're like, you want to call your rich uncle and you're like, give me a job on this um, on this set. Well, if you show up to set and you're an untrained actor, you don't understand how the craft of acting works. You don't understand how sets work. Uh, all the the lights, the cameras, all the equipment, all the people staring at you, quickly you're going to fold under the pressure of that. People are going to realize you're not a professional and you're likely going to be fired. So even if you do have those connections without the craft, without knowledge, without professional training and without professional systems and processes in your career, you're quickly, even if you have the benefit of nepotism, you're quickly going to be discovered as an imposter and you're going to be fired and they're not going to have you back. So even if you have those connections without craft and without training, you're going to burn those bridges really quickly. So it's first what you know, meaning you're on this call and you want to break into the industry and you want to learn about auditions, but you haven't taken any acting classes. I would strongly encourage you to research in your area and we can help you with that, too, is um is to take acting classes, learn the craft, learn the industry, take workshops like these, so that then when you do meet people that you know, and you do have the benefit of nepotism, of course, this is a, like, it is an industry, yeah, where that is a thing. So it's kind of a trick uh, trick myth. There is, there isn't value to knowing people and to getting directors and other actors and producers and casting directors to know you and know your work. I'm not going to say that that isn't valuable. It's hugely valuable. But first, it's what you know. Then it's who you know. Um, Adam Daniel Mazze is, uh, wants to say here, corollary to myth number three, best believe if you act like a knob and gutter snipe, you will alienate people in the network and you will thereby gain instant pariah statuses. 
Uh, you shall be pilloried. That's a word I'm not sure I've ever heard before. I'll take your word on it being a real word. Uh, throughout the industry for your, uh, in, there's another word, intrazignance. I think uh, Adam Daniel Mose is just making up words here. Uh, recalcitrance and overall sphincter muscle-like behavior. Yeah, what he's saying is, um, yeah, if you can be the best professionally trained actor in the world, but then if you burn your bridges as well, and you act like an asshole, then people aren't going to have you back. So, uh, yeah, you want to you want to learn a craft first, what you know, then who you know, uh, and then you can develop and foster those relationships. And you do want to nurture relationships. So, um, let me just be clear that I'm not saying don't nurture relationships. One of the best things about any business is people like to work with their friends. People work with people that they know, that they like, and that they trust. And you can think of a lot of actors who made a break with one particular director. Uh, and then they continue to work with that director. So every time that director is working on a film, they're thinking, oh, who's my guy? I want to have him. Um, and there's a lot of that uh, in the industry as well. All right. We can take Adam's um, Adam's comment down. Uh, myth number three, busted. Myth number four, I'm a great actor, but I don't perform well in an audition setting. That is a myth if you're convincing yourself and that's a story that you're continuing to tell yourself. You need to smash through that because it's not serving you. Even if it is true, you might be thinking that like, oh, I am a great actor. I have performed really well. But right now, really auditions until you're an A-lister or you're till someone who, until you are someone who's getting offers directly without having to audition, the way you get jobs in this industry is by auditioning. So you can't say that you're a great actor. You're just a shitty auditioner because in order to work as a great actor in the business, you need to be a great auditioner. So uh, you need to get over that, which again, that's why you're here today. So you need to see auditions as performance opportunities. You need to take joy in those auditions. You need to learn how to have fun in those auditions, learn how to see every audition as um, a playful act of creation and an opportunity to perform and an opportunity to create rather than seeing them as totally two separate things. And they're different phases of the same thing, but you got to master your audition technique so that you can get on those sets and then show everyone what a great actor you are. But you got to show what a great actor you are in the audition. Otherwise, they're not going to trust um, that you can get the job done when it's costing everyone $50,000 an hour on a million dollar set. So, um, Banish that thought from yourself. If right now you're thinking, oh, I'm a shitty, shitty actor. I'm a shitty, shitty auditioner, but I'm a great actor. You need to reverse that thinking. It's cart before the horse syndrome. And that happens a lot. A lot of people feel like, oh, my, my um, performance of a lifetime is in me. I know I can deliver the goods, but I'm just not given the opportunities because I always shit the bed in auditions. I have too much audition nerves. I have anxiety. I have stage fright, whatever you might think. Uh, and you need to smash through that, which is why you're here today, because we're specifically working on auditions and audition process so that you can step into your audition hero mindset. Uh, we've got examples to your power performance batteries, Cronenberg and Vigo, Tarantino and Uma Thurman, Scorsese and Leo DiCaprio. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So again, let me be clear. Um, it's not that nepotism doesn't exist. You want to get to that point where you're working with your family and friends and, and, uh, working with people that you know, love and trust, but it's not going to work out if you don't know if you're not a professional. Um, so that's why learning professional, uh, learning the, the professional craft, learning audition systems, having, professional processes in your life so that people know you're professional so they know oh i want to get my buddy uh, brandon on this set but it's not just because he's my buddy it's because he's a fucking great professional and i know that he's going to be able to deliver the goods under pressure under short notice even if i have to give him sides half an hour before we're going to shoot and we're like this whole scene we just re rewrote here's a brand new scene for you to learn i know that when the director yells action He's going to deliver the goods. Um, myth for busted. We're busting some myths here. How are we doing, everybody? Let me know in the comments. Is this landing? Is this making sense? Is this helping you? Am I blowing any minds? Uh, someone says, I landed like a 747 on a YYZ Toronto runway. Good, good. 
it's landing. Uh, myth number five. Myth number five is a lot of people say this, especially when they're new, is I can't afford to invest in my career until I book more jobs. Again, cart before the horse. Uh, you don't get fire without giving the fire fuel. You can't go stare at a fireplace and be like, why isn't this fire warming me up? And it's like, oh, by the way, you haven't put any wood in there or you didn't put any kindling or gasoline in it. It's stoke it with the fuel, which sometimes means your time, energy, and money in the form of classes and workshops, home studio upgrades, uh, whatever it, it might be. Um, you got to find a way to invest in things. You invest first. One of my mentors, James Wedmore, through his business by design program, my one of my business coaches, he says the transaction uh, or the transformation begins with the transaction. Uh, and what that means is the second you put skin in the skin in the game, meaning time, energy, and preferably money. Money is just energy. It's an energy exchange. When you pay for something, the more you pay for it, ideally, the more you're going to be invested into it. Um, and uh, money and affordability is also very subjective. For some people, a hundred bucks is a lot of money. For other people, a hundred bucks is the equivalent of a penny. Um, but when you invest in something, you pay attention to it. And I always give you the example of a fitness trainer. You can go get all the free fitness training on YouTube that you want. And you probably even know in your head what you need to do. If you get up every morning and do 100 jumping jacks and 100 push-ups and 100 body squats, you don't need any equipment. You can be fit every day uh, and you can eat healthy fruits and vegetables. But the second you invest in a fitness trainer and some fitness equipment and a gym membership, and a dietitian and a nutritionist like professional athletes do. You think about LeBron James. He spends a million dollars a year on, on his own personal fitness. He has his own trainer, his own nutritionist, his own sports psychologist because he knows he is, he is who he is. He's a champ. He's a professional. And so he invests in those things first. So uh, just understand that to get to top level, you got to do and act and um, – perform the way that professionals do and professionals invest in themselves they invest in uh, acting classes they invest in acting workshops they invest in their own personal health um, our our bodies as actors our bodies are our tools so if you're not doing vocal and physical warm-ups and and workouts um, you might be leaving something on the table maybe that means investing in haircuts or investing in makeup or investing in wardrobe investing in home studios Investing in classes, investing in workshops. So um, you got to find a way and you might be like, oh, well, I don't have money to do that. You will always find a way to um, to pay for things that you feel are an absolute necessity. So an absolute necessity. So if you're feeling that you don't, uh, that you can't like, yeah, I absolutely can't pay for this. I have zero money. Then you need to raise your level of necessity. Uh, you need to beg, borrow or steal it. You need to ask your friends. I know that all of you on this call, if push came to shove and it was a gun to your head and you need to find a way to make something happen, you could. Um, whether that means borrowing money, whether that means working harder on a side hustle job, maybe that means being a little more disciplined and you're not spending as much money on beer and uh, potato chips and pizza uh, so that you're saving some money so that you can save up for the workshop, for the class, for the home studio, for the new webcam, for the new laptop. Uh, all of those things. Adam Daniel Mazze says, you're either all in or you're all out. You can't be half in. Yeah, it's that old adage of being half pregnant. You're either in or you're out. Uh, so be all in. Thank you.